So let me just get off of saying, let me have a prayer first as we get started. Father, I just come to you and I thank you that today is a day that we celebrate uh, an event in history where Jesus entered Jerusalem and people were so excited uh, about his coming and they were all anticipating a victorious king. And so God, we just thank you for today. Uh, we call it Palm Sunday. And uh, so, God, we're gathered here virtually uh, to celebrate that. And so, God, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would teach us as we look at your word to, to see what happened on that great day as Jesus had his triumphal entry um, into Jerusalem. And so, God, we thank you and we love you. And again, God, just be our teacher today. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a reason that victorious kings ride magnificent horses. Now, most people today have never had the thrill of sitting atop a horse and feeling the energy and the power welling up when your horse is anticipating an opportunity to compete or to run. As a teenager, I had the privilege of serving as a student president, uh, the student president of the Indiana High School Rodeo Association. At each rodeo, we had what they called the grand entry, and it always began um, with uh, some introductions and then uh, the national anthem. So um, I was one of those who would be introduced, and so they would call my name, and, and I would ride in, I'd canter my horse into the arena, we'd, we'd make a full lap around the arena, and then we would stop in the center of the arena and where I would join a few others who had been introduced. And then, the announcer would call to the crowd to stand and remove their hats. And he began to talk about the American flag and what it means to be part of the United States of America. And uh, a young lady would enter the arena trotting her horse at a very slow trot um, and uh, everyone's attention would be on the American flag. And my horse, Aztec, he was an old ranch horse, and uh, he would just sit there with his head down, no movement, just relaxed as she rode all the way around the arena and came to stop in front of all of us uh, who were sitting there on our horses. And then they would play the national anthem. And as the music rose to a dramatic ending of the song, I could feel my the energy and power of my horse aztec he could hardly contain himself until i released him and we followed the the american flag one more time around the arena at a dead run and then out the gate now i don't know for sure who enjoyed that moment the most it might have been the crowd it could have been me but i think it might have been aztec he loved that moment one of my favorite movies is the movie Secretariat. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch it, it's awesome. It starts and ends with a quote from the book of Job. And I'm just gonna read that quote to you because I think it's so powerful. Now God is talking to Job here. It's in Job 39 and um, it's, uh, it's in verses 19 to 25. And, and this is what God says to Job. Do you give the horse its strength or clothe its neck with a flowing mane? Do you make it leap like a locust, striking terror with its proud snorting? Its paws fiercely rejoicing in its strength and, and, and charges into the fray. It laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. It does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles against the side along the flashing spear and lance. In frenzied excitement, it eats up the ground. It cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds. At the blast of the trumpet, it snorts, aha! It catches the scent of battle from afar and the shout of the commanders and the battle cry. You know, there's a reason victorious kings ride magnificent horses. Because they are a symbol of power and strength. And yet, on the final week of Jesus's life, our triumphal king, our victorious king, didn't ride into Jerusalem on a stallion, but rather a colt, but not of a horse, of a donkey. Listen to what 
the Bible says in John chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples didn't understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about and had been written before about him and that these things had been done to him. I am looking forward to sharing with you this week. You know, Jesus was a week away from his victorious battle over evil and sin. But the crowd was anticipating something totally different. They wanted Jesus to overthrow Rome. I believe they were ready for him to even put the religious leaders in their place. But they had no idea how much of a bigger, broader plan that Jesus had in mind. As I said, I am so excited about the opportunity of sharing with you this week through our daily spiritual trainings called Soul Care Live on Facebook uh, at noon on each weekday. Um, we're going to be talking about the lessons from Jesus's final week of his life. And we'll be coming together on Thursday night on Zoom uh, to take the Lord's Supper because it was on that Thursday night that, that or our Thursday night that Jesus uh, instituted the Lord's Supper with his disciples in the upper room. And then on Good Friday around noon, well, at noon, we're going to be having a special time of prayer uh, on Zoom and Facebook Live. And then on Sunday, we will be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Now, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus every Sunday. That's why we meet on Sundays. We also celebrate the resurrection of Jesus every day because it is the resurrection power that, that gives us the opportunity to live into the kingdom of God and all the blessings that God has for us. And so we're so excited, though, to, to take the opportunity to celebrate the anniversary of the resurrection. But I want to come back to that Sunday before. We call it the triumphal entry. Jesus rode into town on a donkey. You see, Jesus' victory was not won by the blood of the many soldiers that he commanded, but by his own blood on the cross. Let me say that again. Jesus' victory was not won by the blood of the many soldiers that he commanded, but by his own blood on the cross. Let that sink in. Even as the people praised him, he entered the capital riding a young donkey instead of a magnificent horse. Zechariah 4.6 is the passage that this comes from. It says, this is the word of the Lord, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You know, Jesus's greatness isn't judged by his power. Oh, don't misunderstand. He is the almighty God, the creator of everything that we know and see and touch and feel and hear and beyond, even into the invisible realm. He has power over everything and everyone. He has authority over everything and everyone. But his greatness isn't judged by his power, but by his surrender to God's will. You see, in Luke 22, verse 44, we're going to see this 
uh, on the night before he was betrayed, right after he instituted the Lord's Supper with his disciples. Jesus is going to go to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's going to pray. He's going to pray so hard because of the level of stress that he was under as he was facing, because he knew what was coming, the crucifixion um, uh, on the cross. And so he prays to God, if there's any other way to accomplish what you desire, then remove this cup from me. In other words, don't make me go through the crucifixion. But then he surrenders to God's will. God's will, and he says, not my will, but yours be done. Here's one application for this week as we continue in this stay-at-home order. Um, we will be faced with many stressful situations. And so I want to challenge each of us to consider this idea. When we're in conflict, whether it's with the Romans, as the people thought, or against sin and evil, as Jesus knew, or in our own homes, in the difficult relationships of, uh, of being confined as we get cabin fever and, and we struggle uh, being uh, in close quarters in our relationships. Let me ask you this. When things get difficult, when things get hot, will you ride in, or shall I say charge into the fray on a magnificent horse wielding power and strength? Or will you humble yourself and surrender yourself to God Enter into it on a donkey. Because, you know, the Bible teaches us several things. That a soft answer turns away wrath. That love covers over a multitude of sins. And so what I'm saying is, I love horses. But I think what we see in Jesus is he enters in relationships and difficult situations not by the power and strength that he can wield, but by submitting himself to God's will. And as we know, God's will is to love our neighbor, love those who are in our families, uh, fathers aren't to exasperate their children. Children are supposed to honor their father and mother. Husbands are supposed to love their wives to the point of being willing to sacrifice their own rights and even life. Wives are supposed to submit to uh, their husbands, meaning love them and, and, and partner with them as they lead. And so uh, my challenge to us is will we surrender to God's will? Will we allow the victory not to be on the blood that we draw in the fight, but our own blood, like Christ's blood? Actually, it's really his blood that allows us to experience relationships in this way. So that's my challenge. Will you ride into the fray on a horse or will you choose like our Lord Jesus to ride in on a donkey? If you need to have a spiritual conversation, I invite you. You can private message me here on Facebook. Uh, you can send an email off our Facebook page. Um, if you know me personally, you can contact me personally. Um, uh, you, however you can get a hold of us. If you need to have a conversation about your spiritual life, about your, 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 your relationship with Jesus, I, I would love to talk to you about it. We can connect on the phone later, even if you do a video chat. If you need to talk to someone about your next step, maybe you need to be baptized, please contact us. 
We would love to talk to you about those things. Don't forget to participate with us this week on Soul Care at noon on weekdays, um, Thursday night for communion, um, Good Friday for prayer, and then next Sunday morning, uh, the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Let me, let me close with prayer. Father God, I thank you so much for your grace. I thank you so much for the humility that Jesus demonstrated because he didn't rely on others and their sacrifices. But Lord, he made, uh, he took the sacrifice himself, submitting himself to your will and then surrendering his life for ours. And so God, as we anticipate the, the, the cross coming up as we celebrate um, Jesus' death on Friday, his burial, and then uh, his victorious resurrection. God, help us remember that even in the power of the resurrection, even in the victory over sin and death, that is accomplished through surrender, not by wielding power. And God, that is where the true power and strength come. So Lord, let us take on this mindset of Christ that you might be glorified and we might have eternal life. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.